now on. Now you get two of them. From now on, I will be getting them. So, because I'd rather have the shot than these big old horse pills they gave me to take three times a day. <laughs> and this big light that can catch <laughs> on my back to keep this pain down. So is it going now, Christian? Okay. We are sorry for all those who lost us. Again, the camera was working fine, and then it messed up. But hey, you know what? We're back. Praise God. God is good no matter what. Amen. So, Amen. This just justifies the amount of money we spent for the new camera. So, <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to show a video real fast. So Christian, if you could switch that over. Uh, I told you each week we'll be showing a new uh, video from uh, City Impact. Uh, Charlie, can you turn off the front lights, please? Thank you. Uh, we took the screen up before Christian started. We took the screen up because the screen has a, a big ripple in the middle of it. And so we put it on here so it's, it's flat, give you the idea of what it's going to look like when the new monitor gets put there. And do you, do you notice we spent a lot of time yesterday filling with it, but we got it straight. We changed the colors. We did. We actually had some fun with it yesterday. You see Roger climbing up and down the ladder, me climbing up and down the ladder. So this is this week's video on City Impact, which is going to be a missions focus for this church in 2020. So Christian, go ahead. Turn it up just a little bit. Buddy. Two years ago, I received a phone call that just rocked my world. So this is the Tenderline. Um, we're on Eddy Street right now. So you can see there's a police station right over here, and there's people selling drugs on that corner. And now I'm going to show you where um, I grew up. I used to see a lot of girls prostitute themselves. I used to always ask my mom, what are them girls doing? They were young. But I was young at the time. She went and tell me. She was completely normal, had a great family, just in a poverty stricken district where, man, literally one or two decisions later, you're, you're caught up in the other side of the district. I wanted to be a nurse, and um, I always remember not wanting to ever get beat up by a guy, because um, my uncle used to beat up on my aunt in front of us, so I never wanted to go through that. This is where I grew up. I came here when I was seven years old. It was kind of rough living here, as you can see. It's um, a rough neighborhood. It brings back a lot of memories. Growing up in the Tenderloin was kind of scary. The only place I felt safe was coming to church. I remember growing up meeting Chris because he used to do youth outreach, and he knocked on my door and invited me to a program We've known her for a good seven, eight years. You would never think that this would be the story of Anna. Started hanging around with a different type of people and basically bad influence. I remember meeting her, her name was Never, and a second girl named Amanda. She offered me a place to stay. It was just going to be a place where I could sleep and be safe. And um, I believed her. They had a plan. For me, I guess I was going to be their project. I just asked a simple question. I was like, Anna, what's up? Where have you been? And that's when she went on a two-hour story. I thought she was actually trapping. I was introduced to this man named Earl. Since that day, he never left me, never left my side. I had no idea of the trap. All you hear at night 
your heels like this, because you got to run from everybody. You just got to run. should be doing. I'm not a hey, Christian. Is the lapel one up? But you know what I did? I turned it the wrong way. Wow. <laughs> this is one of those days, isn't it? So why city impact? I had one I had one person last week tell me that this was not something that they could really get behind because there it's over there and if they want out of that then let them they have the they're adults, they can leave. And, you know, we talked and we, we worked through it. But why, why, why are we looking at this? Because this is the result of, like they said last week, 37,000 people in a one square mile area live there. And this is a result of people not engaging in their community. And this is how it's turned out. We have, I, I just saw in Rozo the other day, a guy abusing a woman and she's running down the street. And this guy's chasing her. This is at the Tenderloin. This is Rosa. Okay. Beginning of the year, Deeper Falls. Guy on drugs. Kills the girl. Burns the house down to cover up the, the murder. That's not the Tenderloin. That's just 40 minutes south. If we don't engage and go to a place like the Tenderloin where we can see what's worked, <coughs> see what programs that they have, so then we could bring those back here, and then we could start this. Maybe will we stop it all? No, I'm not that. I'm not going to be that naive. But can we stem the tide? Because see, if we do nothing, it, it, exactly. If we do nothing, 10, 20 years from now, 
We may not be as bad as a tenderloin, but we're not going to be where we are now. And, and what I told somebody, you know, we, we talk about standing in the gap. I looked for a man to stand in the gap, and I found no one. We have a gap that we can stand into. We can, we can learn now and intervene, because if we don't, on the other side of that gap is the tenderloin, is that type of environment. And I, I, I you know, even though I'm not from here, I, I love this place. And I would never want to see this place end up like the places where I came from. So... In February, we're planning a, a pastor's trip back there. Me and a couple of pastors are going back there to look. So even if we don't engage in city impact, uh, there's trust me, there's enough homeless camps to go to and engage that, you know, you, you hit the, the 99 from Sacramento South, you'll find one at every exit. So and that's two hours worth of driving. So there's plenty of opportunity. So that's why we're going to do it. You know, we, it's, it's time we, we start sowing more seeds. We, we always want people to sow seed into us. Well, it's time for us to start being strategic with the seeds that we sow out. So, And I think this one is a good one for us to partner with to come back and bring that information to our area. So, With that, we are going to go into our worship time. Uh, you'll rise, worship, raise your hands, jump, shout, sing, sing loud, sing soft, sing to yourself, hum, clap off rhythm, I don't care. Because it, in the words of that one famous man that's been going around, I didn't like worship today. And then Francis Chan responds, well, it wasn't about you anyway. So just allow yourself to do what God has for you and allow yourself to just show your adoration for him in any way that you need. All right, Christian.
So, as I was praying this morning when I came over and I was praying about what songs, yes, I know we all like Glorious Day because we like to watch Roger get animated. <laughs> but I feel the Holy Spirit led me to those three songs specifically because if you stop and you look at our core values as a church, the three core values that we have, we take all of our doctrinal stands and all the, the theological stands that we have, and we condense them to three core values. So the song Glorious Day, the first song we sang, okay, yeah, he called our name, but what, what's the nice part? That I have to run out of the grave. That's that, that's that core value of being personally responsible. There's something I have to do. He can call my name all I want, but if I don't run out, it doesn't matter. So I have to be personally responsible. The second song we sang was How Precious, right? The, the, the blood of Jesus. Our first core value is gospel-centered. Our whole focus has to be has to be formed by Jesus Christ, and nothing more, nothing less. So that song speaks to that core value. The last song, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Our second core value, our middle core value, is spirit and power. And I think, you know, if you wanted to create a playlist for your life, those three songs should be at the top of the list. And those three songs are probably the signature song for this church. That those they, they match what we believe. It is Jesus through the power of His Holy Spirit and us putting feet to it that makes this whole thing work. So that's why, you know, that's why sometimes you say, "Well, I, we sang that song last week or the week before." Well, because you know what, that song speaks to who we are. Because sometimes worship is about us worshiping and showing our adulation to God, but sometimes worship is also reminding us who we are. You know, we, we talk about worship as being us speaking to God, but sometimes it's God having to funnel it back down to us. And so, that's what I want you to take away from that today, that, that those three songs, I think, if you were with somebody and, and you had the hard words to explain, well, you go to that weird church, James, uh, they, they do things kind of different over there. How, how can you explain that? Well, you know, you're listening to these three songs. This I, is who we are. I told them to show up. <laughs> show up. That's the best answer. Just show up and check it out. Taste and see, folks. But those three songs, I think, encapsulate, you know, who as a congregation we endeavor to be and the vision that we try to, to have for our community, for what God has called us to do. So we're going to get ready to move into our next phase of worship, which is our tithes and offering. So if I could have Guillermo come on up. Only because I like saying Guillermo. Who thought that William could be spelled with a G? <laughs> As we say that if this is a place where you feel like you have been blessed and it's good ground, we pray that you sow seed here and watch God create a harvest for you. Uh, and when you do sow seed, name it, give it identity, so you know that this God, this is what I'm sowing for. I'm sowing for something specific. I'm sowing for something. This is this is part of that. This is part of that personally responsible. I'm putting I'm putting seed to my faith. Amen. So that I know that God is going to do something. So if you're watching and you're out there and you would like to give, you can watch. I'm going to slow it down. I was told last week, I remember last week I was told that I say it too fast. You can always give to Badger Baptist Church, P.O. Box 127, Badger, Minnesota, 56714. So much better, huh? <laughs> so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for this opportunity we have to worship you through our tithes and offering. But we pray that you bless both the gift and the giver, and the seed bears much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
to get ready to go into our corporate prayer time. Again, just another form of worship. Uh, before we do, you know, I, I think we're going to, because again, we do things different here. Uh, Michael, because I know you, you said you may have to dip out early. So if you could go ahead and come on up front. And if I get the, the, the guys to, to come around, Michael. Okay. Let's just pray for for Michael, and then if you're out there, you can extend your hand towards him, because ladies, you have power too. It's not just the guys. Ladies, you have power too. So if you just want to extend your hand towards Michael as we pray for him, so that he can have strength and the right words to say, and that he can be a living epistle to his family in this time uh, of, of sorrow. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for our brother Michael. Lord, we just thank you that, that you are giving him strength in this time of weakness. Lord, that you are giving him words to say, and you are giving him the, the strength and the posture of your Holy Spirit to present to his family, Lord, that he will be a living epistle and a guide to his family. Lord, that when they look at Michael, when those around him look at him, they say, you should be sorrowful, you should be hurt, you should be depressed, you should, you should feel, feel mournfulness. Why are you living in joy? Why are you living in happiness, Lord? That he will have the words to tell them. Lord, that this, this thing that... that the world intends and the world shows as bad and sorrowful, Lord, that you could turn it for good. Yes. Lord, that in this a greater glory will be revealed through our brother Michael, Lord. A greater glory that his family has never experienced, Lord, will be revealed through our brother Michael. Lord, and that a revival will break out, Lord. We may not see it today, we may not see it tomorrow, we may not see it this month, this year, Lord. But seeds are going to be planted in this situation, Lord, and you will reap a harvest. Lord, we ask you for right now in the name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Michael sent me the message yesterday morning before Bible study started. And he told me that he had to give me the sad news that Rena had passed. But he says, but I will be at Bible study. He had to continue to trend when, when Sandy died and passed. The very next morning, Richard walked through those doors. When Ben's mother passed, Ben said, it's because I saw Richard's example that I knew I had to be at the house of the Lord. So Michael said, because Richard and Ben <coughs> set the example, I knew where I had to be. You know, that's what ministry is about. It's not some guy up here saying a bunch of words out of a book. It's about people knowing where they need to be. Amen. And knowing that they're going to be loved and cared for. So, I tell you what, you know, I know Michael appreciates all you guys, and I do too, because that takes a big burden, hmm. you know, off of me, because I can only do so much. But to know that we have a group of people here who can come together and support and love, that's what I think when... Uh, the Holy Spirit fell in the book of Acts. I think that's the model that God was looking for. He wasn't looking for four walls and, and a standard of service and a prayer book. He was looking for people who could rally around each other and share the love of Jesus with each other. So, Okay, we have a couple of things that we need to pray about. We need to remember Mr. Williams in prayer. I haven't got an update on how his surgery went. It went good. It went good, okay. So uh, let's just keep remembering him in prayer and the Williams family, uh, Laura. All of them, I know there's... Uh, I, I, I don't. I don't know if I should say it out loud because Mr. Williams may be watching. But I know there's a segment of the family trying to plot to get him to move, so he could be closer to family. So, <laughs> so we'll just pray that God's will will be done with the family. And how about that? Uh, also for Joy Wynn's family, again, like I said, she was the strength for that family. Uh, and, and I know that family. You, you know, let's just be honest. The, a lot of folks in that family need Jesus. And. Uh, Joy was a strong person, so let's let's continue to pray for that family, and that maybe maybe again, just like we prayed with Michael, that through this and us opening up our church for them would be an opportunity for the gospel to be shared and for strength and love to be given. So uh, again, Michael, uh, we'll continue to pray for Michael and his family. Uh, and then the last thing I put on here for my list was our 2020 focus uh, for the year 2020. There's some. I'm going to talk to Richard and Larry after the service just for a few minutes. Uh, we're talking like five minutes tops. So I, I know I, Helen got that look like, 
So we're gonna have some talk because we have some we have some things that God has laid on my heart for 2020 beyond City Impact that uh, is is uh, <coughs> some of the stuff that was spoken before is starting to really kick in. You think you think we've stretched our faith in 2019? You ain't seen nothing. 2020 is gonna be a you better break out your old Stretch Armstrong doll and God's gonna see how far you can pull us before that gooey stuff inside comes out. So we're going to pray for 2020 and that focus and what, but I, I feel that like God has placed on my heart as what should be our next step. So is there anybody else, any other prayer requests that are out there? Um, I've been talking to Neely, which a lot of people know her as Autumn, mm-hmm. from Stuart, who's Linda's granddaughter. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to pray for her. Mm-hmm. I can tell there's problems. Mm-hmm. Miss Joyce's granddaughters? Yes. Oh, Miss Joy's granddaughters. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, those are her great granddaughters, aren't they? They're yes. her great granddaughters. Yes, they are. Uh, Autumn it? has come to church here mm-hmm. a couple of times, and I knew her from First Baptist and Diane mm-hmm. Wallace, and we all called her Lily, but <laughs> but she's a she's a little special to us. Yeah, and you know I I, I think Miss Joyce too. We need to remember. Uh, because I know there's transition going on, and transition is never always a smooth thing, no matter how many times we prepare and plan. So. And James uh, has asked for a prayer for a quick, positive resolution for heat in the house. James number one. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> first James. Yeah. yeah. First James. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with James. Yes, ma'am. My granddaughter. <coughs> Jessica. Yes, she has a kidney disease that she had from birth. She had a surgery right after she was born. Uh, she turned blue on them. Um, this kidney has quit working as an adult. She's 17, and um, they're talking about taking it out and get some rest. Yes. Um, the other kidney is enlarged because it's having to carry the load for both. Mm. Yes, we will definitely continue to pray for that. Ms. Sue? Cat. Cat? Yep. She's, she's, cat, yes. she's in uh, a rehab center now, rehab. Yeah. And um, she seems to be having really good spirits. She calls herself a pirate because mm-hmm. they had to amputate yeah. all the way up the calf. So, but she seems to be doing a lot better awesome. since they got rid of the foot. Yeah. Yeah, those are some. Sue shared the pictures with me. Uh, but you know, I, I think also before I ask for anybody else, uh, the Holy Spirit just put this in me. And I know the, the we, Tracy and I ran into Gina O'Leary at Dollar General the other day. Okay? And I know all the things that have been said. I know all the things that have happened. Okay? Positives and negatives. But, you know, she lives here in Badger. We extended an invitation for her to come to church here and just to come visit. And so I think we should pray for her as well. You know, I, I can tell you she looks a million times different than she did a year ago. You know, she actually looks healthier than she did a year ago. Uh, she told the person at Dollar General that she had gone through a, a pretty much an, almost an entire year of inpatient and outpatient mental health and recovery. So, uh, you know, there's been a lot of water underneath that bridge. So let's just continue to pray for you. You know what? First off, she's she's part of our community now. So and my relative. And, and she's really one of Richard's relatives. We need so let, let's just let, let's just continue to keep her in prayer. You know, I, I know that again, there are positives and negatives. People say positive and negative things about me. So but our job isn't to judge the person, our job is to pray for the person. So let's just continue to let Gina up in prayer. Anybody else have a prayer request? Son Bert. Bert. Richard brought in some pictures of Bert's surgery, and it looked like he was preparing for a Dr. Frankenstein documentary with a big, huge scar right here where they had to cut. And so, uh, yeah, let's continue to pray for Bert and pray for 
you know, I, I saw a <coughs> posting from uh, Rachel the other day where she showed a picture of her getting ready to go in for a CT, and they're looking so they can determine what type of radiation treatment to use for him. So let's just, yes, definitely continue to pray for birth. Anybody else? Um, I have a crazy report. Um, <laughs> almost 50 years ago was the last time that I saw my biologic, one of my biological brothers. And so for the last 50 years, I've prayed off and on. And then after I rededicated my life nine years ago, I really started praying, God, just just let me know he's okay. I don't care if I talk to him. I don't care if I see him. Just let me know he's okay. Well, Friday night, I got a message from him on Facebook, and he called me, and we talked for two and a half hours. So, so you want to praise for the connection, but prayer for the phone bill. It's not my phone bill, it's his phone bill. <laughs> <laughs> but most of all, I just I want everybody to know. I mean, I've been praying for fifty years. So, if there's something that you're praying about and you're believing God for, hold on. It's it. Sometimes it takes time, but if you can just hold on, it'll get there. It'll get there. I hope it doesn't take 50 years. No, I won't be here. <laughs> but yeah, so, so praise God. I did have another biological brother, but he passed away 10 years ago. But So, yeah. Yes. You have a praise report. Praise report. Um, for all the farmers who still have crops out there. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks Lynn, Lynn yard does not look good. Yeah. Yes, and the flooding. Yeah. And the fires in California. Yeah, fires are in Nevada. Thank you. Yeah. We're standing about 20 miles from where my sister and I live. Request for you talking about outreach for communities. Mm -hmm. Well, then, could we just pray for our communities? Most definitely. You know, the city of Roseau has a lot of negative people. <laughs> so, if you could just, you know, just pray for change, prayer or praise, praise report. Um, I do believe Satan was in my path this morning because he tried very, very hard not to allow me to get to church. Here I am. And we are glad you are here, Ms. Tira. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just, uh, on your prayer request for our communities, I'll, I'll just share this little bit of something I want to talk with Richard and, and Larry about just a little bit, which we know, but part of it is, is in 2020, we're looking at an initiative to uh, move, but not move, okay? We are looking at starting a weekly or by our every other week Bible study in Greenbush at the community center in Greenbush and we're also looking at moving once a month our men's breakfast Bible study to the diner in Roseau to create an outreach in Roseau as well because there's people outside of the areas who won't come here <coughs> so if they won't come Grant, uh, Greenbush and Badger have a unique relationship right because of the combined school, but there's people in Greenbush who won't come to Badger because it's Badger. There's people in Badger who won't go to Greenbush because it's Greenbush. That's why there's GMR, and there's BGMR, then there's Badger. Everybody's got a different way they say everything. So what we'll do is we'll just take it to them. It's uh, Bob Stockman and actually talked to me about it probably a year ago. We just dropped the, the little bug. And so we've been praying about it and thinking about how we want to strategically do it. And we, it may end up being that we have a Bible study at the community center every other week in Greenbush, and then the weeks that we're not in Greenbush, we're having one wherever we could find in Rosa that will take us.
because we said this a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, it was brought up that the type of teaching that is coming out of this house is strong, it's powerful, it's life-changing, and it's not being disseminated in other places. That there are people in Greenbush who need it who are not getting it. There are people in Rozo who need it and are not getting it. So, so that's part of that 2020 initiative is we're going to stretch our community even further than what we've done so far. So any other prayer requests? Yes, Ms. Denise. Um, just a new prayer for Dallas. He, uh, he's stage three. Mm. And so he's got to have chemo. Probably will take the next six months. And he lives alone. And I'm, I'm getting the vibe that his living conditions aren't the best. He doesn't have a lot of energy to do anything, but he doesn't really want anybody to come in there. Um, what I'm picking up is he might need some help with meals once in a while. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have um, the energy probably to fix anything. And uh, I don't know how his transportation is going to go for getting to transport for these mm -hmm. treatments. But uh, these are all things that are needs that I see and just uh, that somehow we can reach out to him yes and uh, because it's it's gonna be a hard task and I don't think you know he could be very sick from the treatments and to be alone and um, yeah he uh, is gonna need some building up so my spirit is is in relationship with God and so yes Oh, yeah. Well, God has the right answer, so we just bring it to him and let him give us the answers. Yes, Ms. Nikki? Uh, we pray for Stephen when he was um, coming back from the uh, airport when he got to Denver, like in a car accident. Ooh. And, uh, and I've been in pain since then. Something about her, Denver, and cars. You know what God's uh, telling you? <laughs> God's telling you North Central University. <laughs> it's official. But yeah, we have the black guy to hit that cement barrier on the mm. side of the interstate, like head on. So I praise God that we're all, for the most part, okay. But yeah. But the pain yeah. sticks. Yes, ma'am. Jimmy Coughlin. Oh, Thanks my sister. Jimmy. Mm -hmm. She hurt her hip. Oh, my step -mom. <laughs> Yes, Peanut, we'll pray for him. <laughs> Anybody else? <coughs> Mr. Richard. I have a pr uh, praise report. We'll take it. I went to the church, the altar, mm -hmm. in Goddard, Kansas, where John and Linda attend with their son Jeffrey. Yep. And. Uh, <coughs> It was interesting how friendly everybody in that church was. Awesome. And that pastor, to me, seemed like he had the same personality as you. And then <clears throat> before he even had uh, worship service, he asked that anybody in the, in the church who needed prayer or Mm -hmm. whatever, come forward. <laughs> and I was shocked that three-fourths of his people were up front. <laughs> <clears throat> I, knew I needed something, too, so I went up front. There you go. And when the pastor <coughs> came, prayed for me, he put his hand on my head and prayed, and I put my arm out and I touched his sides, and I felt God take care of a chiropractic treatment that I had never been able to cure. Wow. And that pain has disappeared. Something I've felt Amen. kind of a catch in my neck oh, yeah. for over a year. And all of a sudden, it's not there anymore. Well, see, you could go to the chiropractor, you could go to the great physician. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
That's, 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 a, prayer, that's a praise report I love to hear. But you know what that praise report does? Is that praise report those people who want to tell you, well, God doesn't do that anymore? That just runs right into the face of it. That's right. Well, if he doesn't do it anymore, then why did he do it for me? So, again, it goes by what we said a couple weeks ago. Richard, you weren't here when we said it. He's not the God of I was. He's the God of I am. It's not I was a healer. I am a healer. Amen. It's not I was a deliverer. I am a deliverer. That's who, that's who we serve. Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> Prayer and praise report for Tom and Keith Pringle. Yes. On their new adventure. They are going together. to have an adventure. Yes, they are. And a prayer request that they have safe travels and that they enjoy their life while they are RV bound. Yes, to Oregon. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there's still a couple more things that need to be done, but but I'm just my mouth is watering for the egg rolls. That's all I know. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, they will have delivering. To the manager? <laughs> they're going to gut the, they're going to gut the upstairs and turn it into a catering kitchen. <laughs> have to see how fast that horse and buggy can get around. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? <laughs> I can stay at home. I, I, they probably won't deliver to Badger, but I'm you can stay at home. I'm going drive if you get my chair. <laughs> if there was a big enough crowd for Badger. Oh, yeah. They, they might, so... <laughs> Uh, and then the la let me put one last thing on here and, and uh, for us to pray about, and then we'll go into prayer. Uh, I don't know if we're going to start it this month because we have some other things that came up, the Joy Wins uh, Memorial Service and all that. But we are starting uh, one Friday night a month. If it doesn't start in October, we'll start in November. We're shooting for the last Friday of the month, starting at, what did I say, five or six? Five. Six, because you got to get time to get home, eat dinner, then come over here. So from 6 o'clock p.m. on Friday to 6 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, uh, men, you are welcome to come into the church. Ladies, you're welcome to come until 11 in the evening, but the men will be here all the way through until 6 the next evening. Yes, you could you could bring a bedroll and sleep. That's fine. But we're going to have a 24-hour prayer and fasting every single month until Jesus tells us to stop. Because that's how these things, this 2020 vision, reaching communities, that's how we reach communities, is we have to... We have to strategically and deliberately and intentionally be in prayer and fasting. That's how City Impact got started. Is he went out and God told him, showed him a need. He didn't know how to meet it, so he. Now he walked 27 miles around the entire city of San Francisco praying. I'm just asking you to come for 24 hours, and I'm even going to let you sleep for a little bit. So you know, but so let's let's keep that in prayer because that's going to be. That, that, that's the make or break. That separates the men from the boys. That separates the, let's play church or let's be the church. That's what separates. That's the separating line. So ladies, uh, because of just because of our logistics, you guys, you're welcome to come and pray. We'll probably have some messages playing and stuff like that to, to build us up and edify us. Uh, devotion time. Uh, but... At 11, I would respectfully ask you to leave because after 11 o'clock, we'll just have worship music on. If the guys want to put their bedrolls out and sleep, they can. We just don't have facilities for men and women for that because I don't think nobody wants to sleep downstairs. Okay. Not right now. <laughs> so. Name the business of the month. And the business of the month, Casey Market. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst, in our community, Lord. We thank you for your 
your faithfulness to us, Lord, and we, we just thank you, Lord, that you are a God who is unchangeable. You are, you are the, the great I am, not the great I was. Lord, right now we just bring these prayers to you, Lord. We, we pray for, for our, our dear brother, Mr. Williams, as he recovers from his surgery, Lord, that you provide a quick recovery and strength to his body. Lord, that you bless his family and in their endeavors, Lord, and that as they have traveled to him, that you give them safe travels home, Lord, and that whatever your will is that for their family going forward, Lord, that it will be revealed and that they will they will grasp it and follow it. Lord, we pray for Miss Joy and her family, Lord, as she has gone on to her reward. Lord, we just pray right now for strength for the family, Lord. We pray that this could be an opportunity for us to minister to this family and to share Jesus with them, Lord, so that they could, they could come to the knowledge of you. Lord, for her granddaughters and her great-granddaughters, Lord, we just pray for them, Lord, in this time of transition, Lord, that this time or this void is, is being felt inside their lives, Lord, that you will you will provide the, the, the proper filling, Lord, to their hearts, Lord, for, for Miss Joyce and her family, Lord, at this time of transition, Lord, that you will soften hearts, that you will guide and direct, Lord, the, those who, who need to be involved, Lord, to do the right things at the right times, Lord, so we can have a godly outcome, Lord, so that your will will fall. And your will will go forth. Lord, we pray for our brother Michael again, Lord, and his family. Lord, we just thank you that you're giving Michael the words and the strength to be that witness to his family. Lord, for our brother James and his house that, that is being rebuilt, Lord, that you that this heating situation will be resolved, Lord, for Ida's daughter Jessica and this kidney problem, Lord. Lord, we just pray right now that you touch her, Lord. Lord, and you, you just strengthen her body and strengthen this family, Lord, that this could be a witness of you to this family. Lord, for Sue's sister, uh, friend Kat and this recovery that she's having to go through, Lord, that you continue to strengthen and encourage her. Bring people into her life who will continue to encourage her and point her to you, Lord. Yes. Lord, for, for Gina O'Leary, Lord, for, for her this new life that she's embarked on, Lord, that you will you will open doors for her, Lord, and that you will, you will start to put distance from her past, yes. Lord, and that she will surrender wholly and completely to your will, Lord, and she will know that she... She has a, a godly family that loves her and cares for her, Lord, that she has a God who yes. wants the best for her. Yes. Lord, for our brother Bert, Lord, that, that is dealing with this cancer, Lord, that, that you'll give the doctors the, the, the right treatments, the, the right information, Lord, that the right things will happen, Lord, and that we will be able to see you move in his life. Lord, we thank you for my mom who is connected with her brother, yes. Lord, that, that you, you've answered prayers that... At times, the prayers that may seem distant, Lord, but you were never distant, and you always answer. Yes. Lord, we give you praise that, that our other brother James, his friend, who had to go into hospital and got treatment, Lord, but we found out that it wasn't cancer. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that it wasn't what we thought it was. It wasn't what they, they yes. thought it could have been. Lord, we lift up our area of farmers who are dealing with this flood and this crazy weather. Lord, we just pray right now that you, you give them the strength to endure through this season, Lord. That this season lasts but just for a moment, Lord. And you have a new season ready for us, Lord. For those of us dealing with flooding in our houses, our buildings, our homes, Lord, for those dealing with the fires in California, Lord, I just pray that you continue to give them yes. the strength to endure. Lord, we, we lift up our communities, Lord, Greenbush, Badger, Roseau, Wanaska, Salo, War Road. <coughs> Lord, we lift our communities up to you in prayer, Lord, right now. And we just we just commit ourselves to your service to, to, to reach our communities, to be the, the light to the communities that you have put us in. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that that whatever was was trying to hinder Carrie from coming, Lord, but that, that she made it here today, Lord, that she is in the house of the Lord, and she is she was glad when they said, "Let us come into the house of the Lord." Lord, we pray for Dallas. Lord, right now we just lift up Dallas to you. Lord, the stage three cancer, this this we we, we break the spirit of loneliness, Lord, that he is that, that he is going to deal with. Lord, we just we just bind that right now in the name of Jesus. That he will have people who will come around him and support him. Lord, that you will give us the right information. That you will give us the right tools and the right ideas to come around him and support him, Lord. That if, if, it, if it needs to be us to be his family and his, his hands and feet, Lord, then so be it. Lord, open those doors for us so we can walk through, Lord. Lord, we pray for our sister Nikki and, and for the car accident that she was in. Lord, we pray for healing for her body, Lord, for the pains that she's feeling for my stepmom, June, and her hip, Lord, we just pray for, for that, Lord, for our sister Sue, we pray for healing in her body, Lord, but not just physical healing, but emotional healing, Lord, for, yes. and relational healing with, with, with her, with her yes. daughter and, and her granddaughter, Lord, we just pray that, yes. that you are working, Lord, that, that Lord, like, 
for my mom for 50 years, Lord, we just pray that it's not a 50-year endeavor, Lord, yeah. but that you can do a quick work on these hearts. Yeah. But we lift up our church and our prayer and fasting time that we're going to, our initiative that we're going to start, Lord, that you will be part of that and that you will bless that and that, you will, that we will have a special visitation from you during those times, Lord, and, and fresh revelation and, and, and fresh the freshness of spirit to come and do the things that you want us yes. to do, Lord. Lord, for our, our 2020 focus, that we'll be able to do the things and reach the people that need to be reached. Lord, we just thank you for that. And Lord, we just we just lift up Tom and Keith, Lord, as they get ready to start a new season of their life. Lord, that seeds that were planted, seeds that were planted would take root. Yes. Lord, that, that whatever situation life finds them in, that they will find you. Lord, that they will find that you were what they were looking for all along. Lord, I thank you that you're going to guide them. That you are going to strategically play chess with them and move pieces into their life that will always constantly try to point them to you. Lord, and I thank you and I praise you for what you're doing. Lord, I, I give you praise for Richard, who went to visit his family and went to their church, the altar, and he went up, Lord, and he felt the healing touch from you. Yes. Lord, that he is a testimony, a living epistle of a God who heals. Yes, Jesus. Lord, and finally, we lift up our KC Market, our Community and Focus Business of the Month. Lord, we just pray that the family would be blessed, that they would be touched. Lord, we just pray for Pete and Paulette, Lord, that they will continue to, that you will continue to provide strength for that family through all the issues and, and everything that they're going through. Lord, we just thank you for that. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory for all that you're going to do. All that you continue to do, and all that you will do. In your precious name, amen. Amen. All right, I think we covered the gamut in that prayer. I was just reminded of Cliff having a broken leg. Yes, Lord, we did in speedy recovery for Cliff. I'm sure he's probably already trying to run laps. <laughs> I've tried to go by there three times, and every time I said, okay, I'm gonna, on my way back into town, I'm going to stop and see Cliff. His truck's over at Steve's place. Every time, he's, he's, his truck's over there, probably in there barking out orders in the wood shop, telling people how to cut this and how to cut that. Because I just don't picture Cliff sitting at home by himself doing nothing all day. Or sitting at home with Gloria all day. So. He's in Thursdays. He has therapy. Yeah. Okay. So, over these last few weeks, maybe even months now, we've been going through these messages that have been showing maybe where we've fallen short. As a church collectively, maybe as the church individually, Right. We've talked about stopping halfway, camping out in the middle. We've talked about telling half-truths, Abraham and Abimelech. Uh, we've talked about holding on to that one thing that's going to kill us and not letting it go, the story of Naaman. Uh, we've done all that last week. We talked about being awake but not alive. You know, we, we slept through the instructions, and then we wake up at the end and just start swinging swords. And we think we're doing what God called us to do, and we're missing the mark every time. Well, today I want to talk about, and I put it on Facebook, and I put the title as, The Other Side of And. It kind of goes along with the half-truths, but it's not telling a lie, it's only doing things halfway. And I think sometimes that's where we find ourselves in the church setting. So if you will turn with me, we're going to start this passage in the Gospel of John, chapter 1. The other side of and. You know, I, I was thinking, as I was meditating on this, I was thinking about there's that, that old hymn, Trust and Obey. And I, I think, isn't that sometimes a problem? The other side of and. We want to trust, but there's an and. Obey. So we get to the trust part. I'll trust the Lord, but... Yeah. What, fast for 24 hours? No, I don't want to do that. Well, it's hard to trust if you don't obey, right? <coughs> so, living on the other side of and. John chapter 1, starting in verse 1, we'll, 
Uh, there's a specific verse I want, but I want to read the whole thing in context. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Not the John who wrote this book, but John the Baptist. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. That's a lot of light, isn't it? He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. So, we know that John, the apostle, is talking about Jesus here, right? We know that. You don't got to be a, a Schofield Bible-carrying Bible scholar to know that. But he also says here that if we receive him, he's given us the right to become children of God. If he was the Son of God, he's now given us the right to become like him. Right? We read a few weeks ago in Colossians that... And we remember in detox, we went over it a lot, that, that if you are in Christ, you have the mind of Christ, that it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. We, we went through all that. So we get to verse 14 now, and verse 14 says this, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So this brings us to our first and. John 1.14 tells us that Jesus came full of grace and truth. If we are, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me, his anointing, the Holy Spirit, right, living inside of us. And if he was that way, then by definition, how should the church be? The, the same way. As a whole, as a church universal, and as a church individual, Correct. So the church needs to be full of grace and truth. But here comes the problem. In today's America, we have a church as a whole and as an individual who wants grace. But let's just not get to the truth part. We want grace. We want, we want, we want grace. And what does grace mean? In the Greek, grace is the word charis, which means Kindness and giving favor. We know it as unmerited favor, that God's grace is unmerited favor towards us, right? We didn't have to do anything. He died without us asking. That's grace. He gave us a gift without us asking. Truth is the word althea, a revealed reality. So we go through life on the wrong side of and. We want grace. We want the free gift that we don't have to do anything for. We want to be able to, God can forgive me, I'll just do whatever I want to, but, but I'll, I can ask for forgiveness and I'll be fine. We want the grace, we want the gift, but we never want to travel to the other side of end, where truth lies. And then here comes the crazy part. As I was studying this and meditating, I, I don't know why God dropped this in me, but I know it has to be of importance, and, and I pray it's nobody here, but I think we all get caught up in this, okay? We all get caught up in, we want grace, but we don't want to hear that what we did was a sin. We want grace, but we don't want to hear that we need to change something. We, we want grace, but we don't want to hear that, you know, okay, here's God's grace, you are saved, but you know what? You don't need to be shacking up with him or her. That's not God's perfect plan. We want the grace part. But we don't want the truth part. Now turn with me to John chapter 8 real fast. And here comes, this is the part that's going to, that separates the men from the boys. When it comes to the ant. We want ant. Now does that mean that if we don't follow the truth that we can't get grace? No, we can get grace. God's grace comes before the ant. Remember, see that? His grace comes before that. Trust comes before obey. 
The goal is, is that if you want my grace, I want you to start living in the truth. John chapter 8, the Gospel of John chapter 8, verse 32. Let's start at verse 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you so herein lies the dilemma. I don't want to get to the other side of and. I want God's grace, but I don't want to deal with the truth. Does Romans 8.32 says his grace sets you free? So you can have God's grace, you can have the free and merited gift of his salvation, and still be bound. Because we didn't want to get to the other side of man and find out there's a truth that will set me free. So I got God's grace. I went up to the altar. I said the sinner's prayer. I did the whole thing. And I'm now I'm living for the Lord in my heart. But don't tell me that what my lifestyle is is wrong. I'll, I'm going to shock people and there's a, this will probably turn some people off. And it may make people not even want to come to this church. But I can tell you right now that if a homosexual person came to the altar and accepted Jesus, God's grace is sufficient for them. If they walked out of the door and they were married to a man or a woman, whatever their same-sex attraction was, and lightning struck them, even though they were still in a gay relationship, they will go to heaven because his grace is sufficient. Amen. But the truth is, is if they walk out and they went back to their old lifestyle... They will never truly be free because only truth sets you free. See, herein lies the dilemma. We want the freedom, but we don't want the truth. We want the grace, but we don't want the truth. We want that unmerited favor. We, we want to come home and there be a free gift sitting there waiting for us. Don't, don't we like that? Don't we like it when you get something, you haven't done anything, and somebody says, you know what, I just want to bless you with this gift? We want that. That's a natural, that's natural, right? There's nothing unnatural about that. That's normal. But he said Jesus was full of grace and truth. So we are doing a disservice to people. We are just doing a disservice to community. We're doing a disservice to our own life if we only live on the one side of the end. Because on the other side is where we find freedom. Let's look at another one. Moving to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. I think I've already wore Roger out. And it's only been five minutes. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, starting in verse 13. Verse 13 says this, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the house. <clears throat> Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we have a couple of things here. Number one, we have the ever so popular, that we love to say, you are salt and light. So our second and statement is being salt and light. Let's talk about that one for a little bit. Let's talk about salt. What does salt do? Salt changes the flavor of things, right? you got a bland pile of mashed potatoes. You put a little salt on it. It kicks it right up, right? It, it just adds flavor to it. It's a flavor enhancer, correct? It's a purifier. It's a, uh, not a purifier, it's a, a preservative. You get salt-packed meat and preserve it. It's about, in the, you know, in the... 
the colonial days and the old pirate days, right, when the ships would come across, they would have the, the salted pork and stuff, the crescent and salt to kind of keep it on their long on their long journeys and all that. But then we have salt and light. So as a prime minister of the Lord, what's, what, what are you trying to say here? And this is what I think, you know, we make a, how many of you like spaghetti? You like spaghetti? You make a big pot of spaghetti sauce, right? And that tomato sauce is just kind of bland. Tastes totally so what do you do? You, 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 you do the old Rachel Ray thing, you have the little the bowl of salt, and you grab a handful of it, you just like that inside, right? When you put the salt in there, yes, it changes the flavor of the tomatoes. But do you see it? No, it kind of blends in with everything, doesn't it? It kind of gets lost in the whole thing. Yes, you're making a change, but you're also getting lost in the process. I think that's why Jesus said salt and light. And I think the reason why we have problems is a lot of churches, now hear this, is we don't mind being salt, but we don't want to be the other side and be light. Because, see, salt, I can make a change, but I can blend. I can make a change, but I can kind of get lost in the, in the background. You know, I, I, I can enhance it a little bit, but I'm not the center of attention. I'm not the star of the show. But I've made a little bit of a change. But now see, once I become light, once I get to the other side of the equation, if I'm salt and light, see, you can't hide light. Right? You know when light shows up. When you are living in darkness and light shows up, you know it. There's no way to hide it. You, you can't get lost in a crowd somewhere. You can't be in the background. You can't be a bit player in the back. Because once light comes, darkness is gone. It drives that out. See, salt doesn't drive anything out. Salt just adds a little bit. So Jesus is saying you're supposed to be salt and light. You're supposed to add some. You're supposed to change the flavor of the environment you're in. But you're also supposed to drive out the darkness in that environment. We want to change, but we don't want to drive out. Because driving out, once I become light, then I'm in the spotlight. And everybody knows, if I was to, if I was to shut all the lights off in this room and show, I'm not going to, and, and close all the, the curtains and make it dark in here, and get my cell phone and turn on the flashlight on my cell phone, you'd know exactly where it's coming from. I can't hide it. But once I put some salt into some tomato, I dare you to try to find the salt and pull it out of the tomato sauce. I dare you to. It's easy to get lost if you just want to be salt. It's easy to stay in the background. Well, and how do we do that? This is how we do it. Miss Denise brings up a prayer request for a man that she knows that she worked with named Dallas who has stage 3 cancer, who's alone, may not be in the best conditions of his house. So salt says, I'll pray for you. Salt says, I'll pray. And that's where most Christians live. I'll pray. Salt and life says, I'll pray for you, and what do you need? Let me show up with a meal. See, that's the difference. It's easy to be salt. Just sit in the background and pray. And we need people who pray. Yes, we do. But he didn't call us just to be prayer warriors. He called us to be prayer war warriors and doers. There is a difference. We have church after church that loves to pray. But don't ask them to be light. They don't want to live on the other side of the end. Why are we not seeing God move? Because we're blending ourselves in. We're letting ourselves get lost in the minutia of every day. We make a little bit of a change. But we never make that next step to show them. We, we live in grace, but we don't operate in truth. We want to be salt, but we don't want to be light. 
We want to change the environment, but we don't want to push out the bad. We don't want to put feet to what we're doing. Right. At the end of that passage in verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. There's another and statement. See your good works and glorify your Father. I just want to throw this in as a little bonus. See, it's not about you. It is, it's, you know, we give out, uh, we have 20 backpacks downstairs. I talked to Mr. Warren, and they want them at the semester break. You know, because at the semester break, kids come back from the, the, the break, and their backpacks are <laughs> tore up from the first part of the year. They, they run out of things, so this replenishes the school supplies. So he says, can you... Can you bring them to me? Because Border State always does their big thing at the beginning of the school year, but there's nothing for that halfway point on. So what I asked him about, he says, well, can you bring them in at the semester? I said, sure. And I, I told him the same thing I told him last year when it came to school lunches. We don't want our name on it. Because this good works isn't to glorify Badger Baptist. It's not glorifying David Peterson. It's not glorifying the Allens, the Richards, the, the Sues, the Carries, the Hills. It's not about that. It's about, see, they see those good works and it glorifies God. I think that's another problem. We don't like that other part of the end. We want to do the good works, but we want the glory to come back to us. See what we did? Look at what we did. I've seen churches that go out, they do excellent things in the community, and they got to make sure. Now, do we use Facebook and social media here? Yes, we do. But when we go out and for all of our other projects, we've never posted because it's not about us getting the glory for it. It's not about us getting the, the praise for going out and doing something. Because they should see our good works and that should glorify our Father in Heaven. It's not about us. That was just a bonus. That actually wasn't in my notes. That was just a bonus. But I think it was a good bonus. Free of charge. Free of charge. You don't get charged on that one. But let's look at this last one. James chapter 2. <clears throat> James, the brother of Jesus. I tell you, if you want to read something that puts the rubber to the road, read the epistle of James. Amen. You want to feel an indictment and that maybe you're not doing enough? If you don't want to feel that, don't read the, the Epistle of James. If you want something to build you up and say, this is what I should be doing, read it. James chapter 2, starting in verse 14. This is our next little thing. And this, is, this has been an argument in the church for a long time. Faith and works. Now, does works save us? No, they do not. We are saved by grace through faith. Period. End of discussion. Okay? So just to get that out there for any Lutheran who may be watching, we do believe in grace alone. We are not a work-saved church. It is by grace alone are we saved. But James lays something else out here for us. There's an and. That we should live by faith and works. We're not saved by it, but once we are saved, this is what we should endeavor to do. So starting in verse 14, it says this. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe that, and they tremble. But do you want to know, a foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works, faith was made 
perfect. Faith and works. Right. Yes, we are saved by grace and grace alone. God's free gift of salvation. But once we become saved, he wants us to operate in faith and works. Now, let me, let me put this out there. There's a, a movement, okay, called the Word of Faith movement. And I may lose some friends on this one. Why are they wrong? Because faith without works is dead. It is very easy to tell somebody, have more faith and God will bless you. But it's the works that says, have faith that God will bless you. And what can I help you with right now? See, the, the, those guys on late night TV, they want you to have all the faith, but they don't want to give you all the things that you need. And what is James saying? James says, if somebody comes up to you and they say, look, I'm cold and I'm hungry. And you say, Praise God, just a little more faith, brother. Hallelujah, brother, just a little more faith will get you. A little more faith and you'll see it, brother. Just have some more faith and God will bless you. And you send them along their way. What have you done? Nothing. Talk. You just talk. And what did it say? <laughs> Even the demons know all about faith. And they tremble. He just puts you in the same vein as demons. I don't know if I like that company. But how do you get out of that company? Oh, you're cold and hungry. You know, let me pray with you. And then let's go downstairs and see if we have any coats that fit you. And uh, if you got time, I'll take you over to KC Market. Church has an account there. We'll, we'll get you some, like a, a wick thing. We'll, we'll get you some milk, some bread, some cheese, some eggs. You can at least make you an egg salad sandwich. <laughs> make Calvin happy. Faith and works. We all want to talk about faith. We all want to do all these big things, but we don't want to do the work. And part of it is the church's fault because for far too long, we have bashed work. Because we've attached work with salvation. It has nothing to do with salvation. It has everything to do with what we're supposed to do after we're saved. So we bash work, we bash work, we bash work, we bash it. It's not about works, it's about grace. It's not about worth, it's about grace. And you know what we did? We never got to the truth part. We want to be, we want to have grace, salt, and faith, but we don't want truth, light, and we don't want to do the work. Ouch. <laughs> I'll just let that marinate for a minute. But isn't that the truth, though? Isn't that what we see? We look all around us and we see churches. They can put out big slogans. But they won't do the work. Are we perfect? No, we're far from it. There is still more work to be done. Are we endeavoring to try to do what we feel like God has called us to do? Of course we are. And do I think all these other churches are, are, are bad and not trying to do what? No. I can't speak for them, and I don't think that they're, they're trying to be rotten and they're trying to be evil and they're trying to be deceitful. Now, do I believe some of those guys on TV are? Yeah, I, I certainly do. Because I don't know how you can say you're a Bible scholar and read this and not see what James just said. <laughs> that you spout your faith all you want. But if you're not putting something to it, exactly, you know, you you can read it all you want, but probably that goes back to that grace and truth thing. That's that salt and light. It's it's easy to sit in the background than it is to push the envelope. But God made it very clear, because in none of those situations is the word or. It's not grace or truth. We don't get to choose. We don't get to choose if we want to be salt or light. We don't get to choose if we have faith or works. Let's remember your schoolhouse rocket. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? That and is connecting two things into one thought. So when God looks at it, he looks at grace and truth as one. 
not two separate things, but one. Salt and light, not as two separate things, but one. Faith and works, not as two separate things, but as one. They all go hand in hand to him. So why in the world do they not go hand in hand with us? Deuteronomy chapter 11, and this is where we're going to end. In the words of the great theologian Medea, Deuteronomy. Why is living on the other side of and important? Because while the children of Israel were wandering through the desert, God gave them another and statement. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word goes forth and it never returns void. It always accomplishes that which it was set forth to do, correct? That's scripture, right? So that means even if he said it in Deuteronomy, it still has power today. And it sets the table for why the ands that we just read in the New Testament are important. Well, this is what God said in Deuteronomy to the children of Israel, starting in chapter 12, starting in verse 26. Excuse me, chapter 11. Confused myself. Starting in verse 26. I confused all of you too, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> chapter 11, verse 26. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. So yeah, there's something on the other side of and here. And you get to choose. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today. And the curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I commanded you today to go after other gods which you have not known. So I lay before you blessings and a curse. The blessings, if you follow those and statements from the New <coughs> Testament... If you be salt and light, if you treat, 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 blah, teach grace and truth, if you live by your faith with works, if you put legs and feet to your faith, then guess what you get? You get, you get the good side of the end. If, however, you choose not to, and you choose to pick and choose what you want to do, well, Pastor, I don't want to be truth. I don't, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I just want to be grace all the time. And let's just show everybody love, which is good. Because we're supposed to love everybody. But what we, the Bible says we're supposed to tell them the truth in love. Right? But we just, I just want to be grace all the time. I just want to be grace. Then you fall on the side of you did not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. You turned aside because the command was grace and truth. Not one or the other. Now it shall be when the Lord your God has brought you into the land which you go to possess, that you shall put the blessing on Mount Gizram and the curse on Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side of the Jordan towards the setting sun in the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the plain opposite of Gilgal beside the, the terebinth trees of Morah? For you will cross over the Jordan and go in to possess the land which the Lord your God has given you, and you will possess it and you will dwell in it. And you shall be careful to observe all the statutes and judgments which I set before you today. All means all. All, in that verse 32, is that final statement. All means both sides of and. You don't get to pick and choose which one you want. You obey it all. So today, my challenge to you, as you go forth about your day, your week, this month, this year, this season, practice grace and truth. Don't be afraid. You know what? If you are going in the power of the Holy Spirit, I, I, I told you this story, right, about the guy that we know, we prayed for him before, who lives a homosexual lifestyle. Because of something that happened in another church, he called me up one morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, and had questions. And I told him, I said, brother, you know, if you're going to ask me these questions, I have to tell you the truth. And he tells me, he says, well, David, that's why I asked you. 
because I knew you would tell me the truth. Now, I'm going to give you grace and love you, but I have to tell you, this is what the Bible says. Yep. And gave him a Bible to boot. Here you go. This is what it says. I, I can't change it. I can't operate outside of it. So do I believe what you're doing is right? No, I don't. I'm sorry. But do I love you? And do I still give you grace? Yes, I do. Because it's got to be grace and truth. See, I'd be doing them a disservice if all I told them was, I love you, brother. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. But if I never told him the truth, I'd be doing him a disservice and I'd be living on the wrong side of the blessings and cursings. Because I had an opportunity to plant a seed in somebody that I chose not to do. Because again, freedom doesn't come from the grace. Freedom comes from the truth. And if we never tell them the truth, then we, you know, I know people bash her all the time. If Nancy Reagan had never just said, just say no, if we didn't tell people that these things are bad for you, there'd be no opportunity for them to change, right? That's right. If we didn't tell you that this was destructive, the only way you're going to know it was destructive is you're going to be punished by it and you're going to be bound to it. You're destroyed by it. And here's the thing. And I hope you hear me with the right ears. This person that we all know, who I had the conversation with, okay, he then gets the seed implanted in him, and he gets truth, and he has to make his decisions. And he is just as responsible for his decisions before God as I would be if I didn't tell him the truth. Did you catch that? I jeopardize my position. Okay, we talked Wednesday night, right, about position and condition. I jeopardize my position in faith and godliness, right, and in preaching the gospel because I refuse to tell the truth. Because I didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Or I wanted to tell them just what they wanted to hear. So if he doesn't make a change, then he, he makes his own choices and he has to stand before God and, and, and answer to his choices. I would then have to do the same thing. The same punishment would be given to me for not telling the truth. And I don't want to stand before God and have God say, you know what? You're a half right. But you never made it to the next part. It's like you never turned the page. You remember, you remember those tests that we used to take in school that would, uh, the very first, that had like 20 questions on it? And the first, the instructions say, read all the questions prior to doing anything. And if you, if you follow the instructions and you read all the way down to the last question, the last question, question 20, the last instruction would say, write your name on the top of the page only, and then take it up and put it upside down on the teacher's desk. Right? But if you did read all the way through, I've been in, have you been in those classes where like number four was was shout out your name, and you hear people in class, David! You know, they shouted their name out because they didn't read, they didn't follow that first instruction and follow it all the way through. I think sometimes that's what happens in our faith walk. We, we want the grace, but we don't want to follow it all the way through to the truth part, and we end up looking like fools. Okay? We want the salt part, but we don't want the light. We want the faith, but we don't want the works. We want to, we want, we want to do the test, but we don't want to follow the instructions. And the instructions that he said in Deuteronomy was very simple. Follow all my commands. Don't pick and choose which ones. If I say be salt and light, then I mean be salt and light. If I say grace and truth, then I mean <clears throat> grace and truth. Now, with that being said, I want to close with this. Is I want you to go forth and I want you to be salt and light. I want you to give grace and truth. I want you to put works, to, to, to put feet to your faith. But I'm also going to give you this challenge and this admonition. Tell the truth in love. Because while there's grace churches, 
and there are truth churches. There are churches that are operating in grace and truth who don't tell the truth in love. See, perfect love casts out fear, and truth sets you free. So what would truth and love look like? Free of fear? Free of bondage? That's a perfect freedom, isn't it? But we have churches that maybe are grace and truth churches, but they don't give the truth and love. So my final statement to you is as we go, yes, grace and truth, but remember, the truth and love. The truth and love. Then we can see people set free. Be like, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Don't be afraid to say, yes, I'm a Christian. I don't have to blend. You know, nothing as silly as watching, you know, the guy who sneaks into the uh, work and he sneaks into the break room and he slides a gospel track on the table when nobody's looking. And he'll be sitting there during his lunch break and everybody's like, hey, who left this year? No. Be bold and say, you know what? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation of man. I'm going to be light. I'm not just going to leave a gospel track on the door and I can run away. You know, I'm looking at that city impact and that adopted building. It would be very easy to just leave boxes at each doorstep. Right? At each door. Leave a little box of groceries at each door. Hoping that maybe one day the person inside will open it up and see it before it bolts. See, that's being salt. Salt and light is... Hi, my name is Dave. I'm from Badger Baptist Church. And I have this box of groceries for you. I don't necessarily know what you need, but I have something for you. And here's our card. Here's some information. If you need anything, call us. See, I became salt and light. I put works to my faith. I was gracious and true. I obeyed the command, which means, guess what I get? I get the blessing. But I would much rather have the blessing than the curse, wouldn't you? So that's our goal. That's our goal. Live on the other side of the end. And then watch God fulfill his promises to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us a clear set of commands. You have given us clear instructions on what you want us to do. Lord, you want us to live in grace and truth. You want us to be salt and light. You want us to have faith, but to put feet to our faith. Lord, I thank you that you're giving us the strength to live on the other side of the end. To be the people that you have truly called us to be. Lord, I just give you praise and glory. Right now, Lord, I just ask if there be anyone under the sound of my voice who has said, you know what? Pastor Dave, I can't do that because I haven't accepted Christ. I'm not even, I'm not even on the right page. I'm not even in the right book yet. If you're here, if you're watching, there's a simple answer to that. I had a person ask me the other day, they said, Pastor Dave, I want to talk to you about accepting Jesus. And I told this person, I said, you know what? It's a simple thing. It's no special, no, no gimmicks, no special tricks. You don't got to do anything special. All you got to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Jesus, I need a Savior. I need somebody to rescue me and to set my heart right. And I want to surrender my life to you. I said, that's all you got to do. And be truthful in your heart that that's what you want, and believe that He can do that. Then it's done. You don't need people to dump oil on your head or prayer teams to pray for weeks. That's all you need. So if that's you, I invite you to take these next few minutes and just say, you know what, God? Examine your heart. And if your heart isn't full of grace and truth, maybe it's time to say, you know what, God? I want to surrender my heart to you, and I want you to fill me full of your grace and your truth. So that way I can go out and be grace and truth to other people. It's as simple as that. 
Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, that you are moving in our midst, that you are touching hearts and touching lives. That even though people may not know it yet, they may not see it, but seeds of hope and of life are being planted in their lives. Lord, and as they stay faithful and they endeavor to find more and more of you, Lord, that that seed will be watered. That seed will grow. It will take root and start to sprout. And then they'll start to see the fruit of their life change from bad fruit to good fruit. And Lord, praise God, you will reap a mighty harvest. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that we are looking at people who are getting ready to produce some good fruit. I thank you, Lord, that we're looking at people who are getting ready to provide you a bountiful harvest. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. I give you all the glory, all the honor. Because it's about you, it's not about me. It's not about us. But it's all for you. In your name, amen. Now, go be salt and light grace and truth, faith and works. And before we go, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you. May he establish you. And may he forever give you peace. My son was back there saying it all along with me. In Jesus' name. If you believe that, say amen. Amen. And you are dismissed. Thank you. And they left before <laughs>